Welcome back to the at home adventures of making art with Mrs. Hutchins. Today we're going to make a nature weaving. Here are some things you will need a piece of cardboard, scissors, a piece of ruled paper or ruler, any kind of tape, any kind of string, yarn, or even tooth floss, and a marker or a pencil. First, we need to make a loom with a piece of cardboard. It should be about the same size as your hand or a little bit larger and a pencil to make some marks. You also need your piece of ruled paper. You can use yarn or you can use tooth floss. I'm going to use tooth floss just so I can show you how easy this is with another material that you might have at home. Lining up my piece of paper, I'm going to make a mark on every other line on the ruled paper. That way they're nice and spaced out for all of the nature things that I'm going to be weaving in. I flip my cardboard around and do the same thing on the other side, drawing a short mark every other blue line all the way to the edge of the card. Now that I have my marks, I'm going to use my scissors, open them wide and cut short marks, short little lines to make indentations so that my yarn or my tooth floss can slide in easily and hold into place. Have an adult help you if cutting the cardboard is difficult. Now I'm going to take out a long piece of floss. It's nice and sturdy. I'm going to stick the short end to the first notch at the top so that I have a short tail on one side and the rest of the floss on the other. Now I'm going to take the short end, wrap it around the outside, and tuck it back in through that first notch. This just kind of locks it into place so that it doesn't come out when I'm weaving or warping the loom. So I'm going to put it down to the first notch on the bottom, wrap it around the back, pull out a little bit more floss, Bring it back up to the second notch on the on the top, second notch on the bottom. Wrap it around the back, third notch at the top, third notch at the bottom. I keep repeating these steps until I get about six pieces of warp string. until I get to the end. Once I go through all of them, make sure that they're tight and just tighten them a little bit. You don't want them to be so tight that they make the cardboard buckle. Once you go to that last notch, you're going to cut your floss, string, or yarn. Then you take the tail and you wrap it back through that last notch again. You're ready to tape. Now I'm going to take tape, and remember you can use any tape, and this is just really to lock those warp strings in place so they don't slide around while you're weaving. I tape it on the front and the back. This tape is really easy to tear. You might know this tape or have this kind of tape at home. It's called washi tape, and it's kind of fun and decorative, but you can use any kind of tape. making sure I put it at the top and the bottom, front and back. Once I'm done, I'm ready to weave. Once you are done with your loom, you're ready to gather materials for your nature weaving. Here are some materials I gathered, but really you can choose anything. Sticks, bark, daffodil leaves, long grasses, clover flowers, one or two branches for some bushes, some weeds, or anything that you think would make for a colorful weaving kids and I took a nature walk. That stick was a little too big, Bennett. We walked through our yard. We found little sticks, big pieces of grass. These daffodil leaves were amazing and perfect for weaving. Basically pick up anything you think you might be able to tuck into your weaving. Even if it's something round, you could always just tuck it in on top. We found some beautifully shaped leaves. Clover, good thing the lawnmower guy hadn't come yet found lots of good things in our high grass, even some beautiful flowers on our bushes. 
Once we got inside, we gathered some materials and we trimmed them so they'd be just a little bit longer than our cardboard loom. That way, when we're done with our weaving, we won't see the cardboard. Once we had our materials trimmed, we began lifting up every other string, under, over, under, over. Follow Beatrice in the top left corner for some fast action. On the other side, I was helping my son Bennett as this was his very first time weaving. He was watching me and following along, and that first one I really did have to help him. But once he got the hang of it, he did fairly well. Beatrice has done weaving before, she's in fifth grade. So she was off like a racehorse, weaving away. And she decided to do one piece of daffodil grass at a time. We were doing three at a time, which in hindsight was maybe just a little bit too much. So once Bennett got the hang of that very first row, he did much better. As you can see, Beatrice has already gotten four rows done. Notice how each one is the opposite of the row before it. Then we decided to weave in a stick. I was pointing to Bennett and showing him how he needed to do the opposite of the row before. So if it ended over, we needed to go under on the next one. Beatrice is showing off her progress. She's doing a great job. Some of the bigger pieces were a little bit more difficult to weave in. So I was helping Bennett here on the top right corner but really he was able to do most of the rest of the weaving himself. Making sure each row is the opposite of the other is the most important thing to making it a strong weaving. Here's our finished nature weavings. I think they turned out great. I can't wait to see what my students at Inhaven come up with. Please take a picture and share either on my email or on my Instagram, artwithmrs.hutchins. Can't wait to see what you come up with.